Hello, hello, good morning or almost afternoon here on the East Coast. Hi, hi, hi. Good to see you guys. Good morning. Good morning, good morning. I'm gonna do a quick periscope on communication. Um especially when it regards to relationships, in regards to relationships. People always say, you know, effect, uh, communication is the key. Communication is the key. Um, but there's so many unhealthy communication habits that people have. And uh, it shows up over and over and over. So I wanted to touch on that a little bit. Good morning, Ebony. Good morning, every single body. So before I start, tomorrow night is our intercession and spiritual warfare course. We're going to uh, teach on um, understanding the, the foundational prayer. We're going to teach on strategic prayer. We're going to teach on prophetic intercession. And then I'm going to activate you guys to do that. You still have time to sign up for that course at AskDrFaith.com. Um, and it's a webinar. You will either call in or log into your computer. And we will teach that course from there. So that's tomorrow. And then after that, the next course we have have is the marriage preparation boot camp which I'll be periscoping on a lot for the next month or so as we prepare for that and um, that one is for singles it's for dating and engaged couples and married people so all right if you're single if you're married invite your friends this will be helpful uh, for them so there's certain things that I feel like you don't have to wait until you get married to master and communication is one of those that you you can tell in your singleness uh, whether or not you're an effective communicator and if you know the areas that you you stink at when it comes to communication while you're single this is the time to work on now if you're already married it's not too late there are things that you can change so that your relationships um, there, there's an ease in, in the communication. So one of the top and first things that I, I feel like it, it is necessary if you're going to be effective as a communicator is dealing with selfishness because a lot of times most of us communicate because we want to be heard. We want to get our point across and it is not to hear the other person's heart. It's not to hear the other person's perspective. And so one of the first things that you need to do, thank you for inviting your friends guys. The first thing that you need to do to be an effective communicator is deal with selfishness and this goes across the board whether it's in romantic relationships or relationships in general uh, we are wired to self-preserve we are wired uh, to kind of make sure that we are heard uh, but that is not effective when you're trying to communicate and so you want to go into it with okay yes I have whatever is bothering me or whatever I have my issue that's going on but let me go with ears that are listening to hear what the other person and is saying instead of me just trying to prove my point all right so the first thing you have to do deal with is selfishness the next thing that you need to deal with and I'll tell you how this all kind of plays in together when it comes to communication is low self-esteem there's a lot of people that are poor communicators because they hate conflict and conflict is usually connected to low self-esteem people feel like if I speak up if I say how I really feel then they may not validate me or they may not agree with me therefore it reflects on who I am and so if you have an issue of holding things in if you have an issue of using the silent treatment if you have an issue of manipulation and man, uh, manipulating through silent treatment then the issue is a self-esteem issue it's a self-worth issue if you if you don't want to talk about things but then all of a sudden you blow up you know three months later or four months later it's because you weren't able to handle the conflict in the moment that it needed to be handled and the other thing the word conflict should be a welcomed word in your relationships because what that means if you can learn how to resolve the conflicts you will be better for it you will have matured so you want to deal with any areas where you're dealing with self-worth where you feel like you cannot speak up the other end of self-worth issues when it comes to communication is we always have to say something because we feel like if we don't speak up if they don't hear what we say if they if they don't that you know if we don't get you know I, i'm just going to tell it like it is is, right if we have that kind of personality the issue is still self-worth or rejection because we feel like if people don't hear me out or if I don't tell them about themselves then I'm not going to be heard so you want to really uh, be examining yourself whether you're married whether you're single if you do that why you are struggling um, 
in those areas okay so you want to look at uh, self-esteem issues you want to look at any spiritual um uh, not spiritual you want to look at the communication patterns of your family because if you look at how your family communicates this is the third thing you're gonna find out that when you get married you repeat those same communication patterns so for example i'm african we're loud luckily my husband is african too and they're loud as well so it wasn't that big of a deal but i counsel couples where one their family was very conservative and they're very kind of quiet and the other kind of family was very boisterous and loud and it becomes this clash so you want to look at the communication patterns of your family you want to take the things that were good and you want to leave the things that were bad and this is huge especially in marriage because what you're trying to do in marriage is create a culture for you and your spouse you're not trying to bring your family's culture into your marriage or your you know your husband's not doing that what you're trying to do is take the good from each of them and then you want to bring them together if it's a negative thing you don't want to bring that into your marriage <laughs> you want to let that go all right so you want to look at the family patterns if everybody yelled all the time that's not something you want to bring into your relationship if you yell all the time that's an area that you know you that you need to work on uh before you get into a relationship it's going to show up if your family stonewalled meaning they just became quiet they just put up a wall they didn't want to deal with it and that's how you've been raised to cope with uh communication or issues you need to deal with that because it's going to be a big issue when you you get into your marriage okay so there's some preliminary things and family of origin is the number one indicator of, uh, of a lot of things how we communicate how we view the world how we view God and so you want to be able to identify those um, how do you tell the difference uh, from the norm well as a Christian the way that you look at the world is based on biblical um, biblical um, rules and so it, it my culture can have a lot of norms but if they don't line up with scripture then that doesn't mean i take on that culture so just because i come from a culture that's very aggressive or they talk loud but if, if i know scripture tells me to be patient or to season my words with grace then my kingdom culture trumps my natural culture and so that's how you can tell the difference between patterns that are healthy and patterns that are unhealthy in your relationship all right. So once you kind of get these funda fundamental things, you want to think about how you even relate to people on a general, uh, general uh, basis, whether it's at work, whether it's with friendships or even romantically, you will find that you usually have uh, ways that you cope with stuff. If something makes you mad, you may just shut down. If something makes you mad, you may just, you know, blow up or you may have the healthy mode of communication and be able to share it. One of the things that we're going to teach during the marriage uh, boot camp that we're doing Doing in September is learning whether you're an internalizer or an externalizer and I've touched on that a little bit here uh, in Paris on my periscopes but it's really really important to understand how you process information people that are internalizers usually take the information in uh, they think about it they process it and then they may talk about it or they may just let it go but most of the times internalizers will marry an externalizer externalizers are people who got to talk about it as soon as something happens Happens, you need to sit there and talk about it now the issue that happens that I see in a lot of couples that I counsel is you guys want the other person to be like you you want them to communicate the way that you communicate so if you're an externalizer every time there's an issue you want to talk about it right away but the other person may be an internalizer so you need to understand that you need to give them time for them to think through things and process it and then come back together now if you're an internalizer and you're married to an externalizer you need to understand that they, that externalizer will not have peace and they'll continue to have anxiety and stress until you guys talk Talk about it and the whole thing about marriage is making you better and the Lord purposefully puts you with people that are opposite so that you can become better and so the internalizer what they have to do is learn how to talk even when they don't want to talk externalizers need to learn how to shut up even when they want to talk and once you are learning that balance and and you understand uh, the communication dynamics of your marriage or uh, then it's gonna be easier one quote that I absolutely 
absolute love is that in marriage, each spouse should be the, the number one student of their spouse. And so your job in marriage is to learn these things about your spouse. If you have dealt with that selfishness topic, which I talked about at first, you're not always going to be thinking about, well, she doesn't hear what I have to say. She's always yelling or he doesn't hear me out. You're going to be thinking about how, why do they communicate the way that they communicate? How can we meet halfway? How can we make this uh, a more resolved issue? All right. Some of the biggest things that I see in uh, when the the heat in the heat of the moment, while people are having what I call heated fellowship, is learning not to match each other's tone. So usually, if someone comes in and they're yelling and they're angry, your automatic response is to yell and be angry as well. Well, what that's going to do is just ex- um, ex- accelerate or uh, cause increase the volume, increase the anger. One of the ways that you deal with people that are maybe a little bit louder or are still working on their anger is that they need to come at a lower you need to come at a lower tone the spirit of God in you can set the pace even in your arguments even in your communication so if I know my husband is frustrated and he's yelling I'm not going to come at yelling I'm going to come at a lower tone if I'm frustrated and and I'm yelling or he's going to come at a lower tone what that does is it brings us back to the other level but if both of you guys are up in the air you're just going to keep going up and up and up and up so when you're communicating it's important to say okay we're not just doing this so that we can you know each get out our whatever is on our heart we're doing this so that we can understand each other the next thing that you need to master is the timing of your conversations and this is really big for women because sometimes women are the ones who want to talk about everything and sometimes it could be the men it just depends on who's the externalizer but we want to talk about everything we just want to discuss it and men are not wise to talk, talk, talk. And so one of the things that you need to do as a woman, this is a a tip for women, is you need to be able to understand timing, when to bring things up to your spouse. Every time is not a good time, okay? Usually after you have eaten and things are calmer or, you know, after, you know, he has relaxed after work, don't let the man hit the door and all of a sudden you're down his throat. That is not going to work very well. So you need both people, both parties, men and women, need to learn timing and effective communication. Communication should be important to you guys that you create space for it. And so some things may need to wait until later during the week where you both are calm and you can talk about it. There's nothing wrong with saying, you know what, we're going to talk about this later. The issue is when people say, I'm not talking about it and they're done and the other party's like well I don't even know what's going on so you need to be able to communicate but communication doesn't always have to happen right in the heat of that moment you should be able to create space so that the other person can now calm down or relax and then you can um, communicate about those issues I'm going to hit on two more then I've got to go one of the biggest ones that I see and I've talked about it before is using the silent treatment shutting down stonewalling not being able to, to say anything it is so dangerous damaging to the relationship holding things in it's so damaging to that relationship and so you need to deal with the core issue of why am I afraid to communicate to my spouse or to the person that I feel like is important to me and if you're afraid of the person that you're with that is a red flag if you do not feel safe to talk about certain things that is a red flag and if you're already married uh, you know that's something that you really need to go through counseling and if you're not if they're willing to be teachable about it fine but if they're not then that's something that you need to move back but you need to learn um, to not manipulate people um, with silence with stonewalling it will make the other person withdraw and then they will not uh, be able to you know uh, be there to communicate with you all right is this stonewalling when you have to step away for a breather no But when you step away from a conversation, let the other person know, I'm stepping away. Can we discuss this two hours from now or in a couple of days? There's nothing wrong with not being able to discuss something in the moment because it's heated and you're upset. But you just need to set a time when you're going to resolve the issue. That's the big problem. You need to be able to set a time when you're going to deal with it. Stonewalling uh, is when you retreat or you put up a wall and you never deal with it. All right? Okay, I'm going to take a couple of questions, then I've got to run. Um, 
I'll touch on communication at, at another point. But it's really, really important to do some self-examination, uh, some self-introspection. Uh, can we discuss this six, mo- six months from now? I'm not sure what's happening then, but you can sign up for a coaching session or a counseling session uh, when you're ready six months from now. All right. All right. Any questions on communication or relationships? If not, I will be jumping off. Uh, but what if you don't want to let, uh, what if he doesn't want to let you take the breather and they keep going and they keep coming at you and they're still, you know, just talking, talking, talking. What you need to do is you need to be calm and you need to say, babe, um, or whoever, I really can't talk about this right now. And then you need to remove yourself from the situation. Get in the car, get outside of the house and remove yourself from it. If they're coming at you and it's getting heated, the best thing to do is try to remove yourself. What are the dates for the prayer and fasting for marriage? That is September. It's this Tuesday after uh, Labor Day weekend. September 6th to September 26th. We're going to pray every morning at 6 a.m. for people who want to get married, for marriages that need to be restored, and for people who want to have children. And uh, we're going to fast. You can get the information at warringministriesint.org. What if you're now a believer and your husband is not, and they, and he constantly curses at you? I mean, that's an opportunity to to really demonstrate Christ-like behavior. And I know it's not easy, but, you know, you guys said I do. And you have grown. You know, it says that we will win. You can win your unbelieving spouse by your faith, by by how you treat yourself, by how you respond to his cursing and all that stuff. You need to make sure that you don't allow it to get uh, stuck onto you. Just understand that this man does not know God. He probably doesn't know how to effectively communicate. You probably are having other marriage issues besides uh, him not being saved, to be quite honest. Because if your spouse is cursing at you, your marriage is already having issues. But if you're a believer, this is an opportunity to model um, what... what um, what some Christ-like be- behaviors. Okay. All right. I'm not sure what you're saying he doesn't. So do you have a blog with effective communication? My blog is at AskDrFaith.com. That is my business site. I have, I don't know, probably like 25, 30 blogs on relationships and the prophetic and spiritual stuff. All that stuff is there. What if you keep having the same conversations over and over? Solutions never applied. Well, it says that a fool should not, I mean, a person should not argue with a fool because you're not going to know the difference, right? So if you're, I mean, if you happen to say, I mean, obviously either the person doesn't want to change or you guys are not communicating effectively. You probably need to bring a third party in to help you guys, whether it's a counselor, therapist, your pastor, somebody needs to mediate uh, whatever the issue is. You don't want to look like two fools because both of you guys are not getting through to each other. All right, I'll take one more, then I got to go. Awesome. All right, guys, have a great afternoon. Don't forget to sign up for the webinar tomorrow. And let's see, the Marriage Preparation Boot Camp Early Registration, I think, ends August 15th. So if you're going to take that marriage uh, for singles and dating and engaged folks and uh, newlyweds, make sure that you go to the Ask Dr. Faith page, check out the price, make sure that you prepare yourself. It will change the how you view marriage. It will really, really be a blessing to you. Uh, what if you used to be loud with women? And uh, Okay, I don't know what that means. So... I don't know. What if he doesn't still change after counseling? Well, then you, if you guys are married, you really need to evaluate uh, why you're married, what, why God put you together, what the, the fruitfulness of it, um, and then pray. Okay. All right, friends. We will talk soon. Have a great afternoon. Bye-bye.